Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. We all love comics, right? I've looked at a few comics over my time on this channel, and one that's come up a lot in like other videos, like in subreddits and such, that I've never made a video about is Stone Toss Comics. And I don't know why I've never made a video about them, because they're, they're a bit of a nightmare and they are something that I would make a video about. So that's what I'm doing today. We're going to have a dive into Stone Toss Comics because you'll see. Basically Stone Toss Comics is just like someone who is anti-progressive and making comics about it with some just really god awful takes that we need to laugh at and roll our eyes at, you know? So that's what we're doing today. But before we get into it, I would like to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, Kia. I hope that you enjoy this video. Um, thank you for all of your support. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. Starts at as little as one pound a month and I appreciate it all greatly. And I also wanted to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Delete Me. And I will tell you a little bit more about them shortly. Let's dive into the comics. First up, we have one that is nine squares. It's a three by three. And it is a man wearing pink with a little hat and some pink hair walking to the pharmacy. And he says, do you have a medicine against homosexuality? And the pharmacist says, uh, no. And so he says, how unfortunate. And then the pharmacist is there laughing, surrounded by a stable household, a nuclear family, father figure. And he's laughing all the way up the hill to a factory of loving parents. And I know that this is saying that those things are all medicine to being queer, to being homosexual. However, the fact that he says no almost implies that those things do not actually fix anything. They don't change being gay. And I get that's what the laughing is. The laughing is meant to be there like, ha ha ha, I lied to him. I do in fact have the medicine, but you know, it, he's also saying no, but she's also saying that those things are not medicine because believe it or not, um, you can have all of those things and still be queer. You, you can indeed have a good father figure, a stable household, a nuclear family, and um, loving parents. All of those things kind of are the same exact thing, but you can have all of those and still be queer. In fact, there's a lot of queer people who do indeed have all of those things because y you're born queer. <laughs> it's not something that you choose. It's not something that is made. It is just something that you are. No amount of love is going to change that because parents who really love you don't try to change that. This guy also loves AI art. He thinks that AI art is real art and is great and fuck modern art. Like as shown by this here of two guys looking at AI art and one says, AI can't make actual art. And the other replies, yeah, I prefer the real thing. And then they turn and look at the banana taped to the wall, which was an art piece from a few years ago. And it's so funny because all this does is prove the point that the banana taped to the wall was art because you're still talking about it now. <laughs> so it clearly made the point <laughs> that it was trying to. <laughs> If you are still talking about it now, then it made an impact, didn't it? It clearly resonated with you if you won't shut up about it. It's so funny. Like, AI cannot make art because it's literally just stealing other people's art that has already been made and forging it into something new. That's not art, that's theft. It's so funny. When these people try to be like, AI artists work really hard. You type some words into a computer and then something comes up and they're like, but it's so hard to think of the prompts, you know? No, no, it's, no, it's not. It's, that's not art. I'm sorry, but not really. It's not art. And there's no soul to it. There's no point to it. All art is political. That's like what makes art 
art. It means something. There's something behind it. There's emotion in it. There is a purpose to why it exists. AI art just exists because someone typed some words in and was like, that'll look cool. Like the, it's not the same because you didn't put anything into it and it doesn't give anything back. And this guy also made another AI art thing, which pissed me off. Someone showing his phone to someone saying, check out this AI art I made. And he replies, you mean a machine made? And then he goes and takes a photo of a ladybug saying that photography is the same as AI art because a camera is a machine. Like use your brain. <laughs> Use your brain for like three seconds here. Because one, as I just said, someone just typed some words in and this AI thing went and stole a bunch of other people's art and mash it together to get something else. Uh, whereas taking a photo, especially like a nature photo, you have to wait and watch and wait for whatever you're taking a photo of to get into a position that is worth taking a photo of. You have to check your lighting. You have to adjust the shutter speed and the exposure on your lens. You have to get to the right spot and the right zoom to be able to capture it how you want to be. You have to think about where you want it placed in the perspective, like where you want it to be. Do you want the like subject to be in the center? Do you want it to be like, how big do you want it to show up? Where do you want it to sit? What do you want in the surroundings? Like you have to think about so much of these things and you have to wait for the perfect opportunity to take the perfect photo. And it's actually really difficult. I took photography in year 12. It was a class I took at school for the entire year and I did like an exam for and everything. And it's fucking hard, you know? And then you also, it doesn't even end with taking the photo. You still have to go home and then like edit the photo to a degree. Manipulate it a little bit, you can add some effects, you can adjust the lighting. And if you're taking it on a film camera, you still have to go home and you have to like develop those photos. You have to sort through and pick the best one to display. Like it's a whole thing. It is a difficult thing to do. It is not made by a machine. A machine just aids you in creating it. That's like saying that like painting is an art. It's the paint that paints it, not the person. Like, come on, come on. AI is such a like terrifying thing. It's just not something that I enjoy. It's not something that I like at all. It is way too comfortable in stealing things from people and way too many people are way too comfortable with stealing things from people. And that is a very good segue into me telling you about today's sponsor, Delete Me. The internet is a big and scary place and all of your information is out there in way too many places way too easy for someone to go and steal. And in an age where internet and phone scams are like such a massive thing and occur every day, and in a time where doxing is so apparent and happening again every single day to people for seemingly no reason at all, having a different opinion about like a celebrity can lead to your phone number and your address being leaked to the masses. And that is such a terrifying reality. And that is where Delete Me is a tool that is so helpful. Like if you are like me, you get a ton of scam calls and scam messages and they never leave you alone. You'll get a call and you're like, oh, I'll answer this, even though you never answer your phone to unknown numbers. And then you have someone on the other end of the phone saying, you haven't paid your taxes. You have to pay this money right now or we're sending the police to your door pay it immediately. And then you start panicking because you're like, I'm pretty sure this is a scam, but what the, what if they send police to my door? And then they use you in that vulnerable moment to get you to send them money. If that freaks you out and makes you uncomfortable and terrified, then you should get Delete Me today. <laughs> Delete Me works to remove your data from data broker websites where they are profiting off of selling your information to anyone 
really. They can just sell your information to whoever wants it. And it means that your information is very easily available for pretty much anyone to find online. That includes your addresses, your phone numbers, your full name, your bank account information, your passwords. It is all just there and up for the grabbing. And Delete Me is a tool that I trust to be able to remove me from those situations as much as possible. And so if you would like to increase your internet safety and security, then you should go to joindeleteme.com slash queerkiwi and use my code queerkiwi and you can get 20% off your US consumer plan. And you can even go one step further and get a family plan because if your information is there, your family's information is there as well. So go to joindeleteme.com slash queerkiwi and use my code queerkiwi for 20% off. Keep yourself safer online. It is a scary world that we live in. Thank you, Delete Me, for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. So this is looking through binoculars and seeing a pride flag. And it turns out it was a Russian person in a tank looking through the binoculars and someone says, who is it? And they reply, Americans, because only Americans have gay people. <laughs> Pride flag? Must be those damn Americans. Those darn Americans and their freaking gays. Russia doesn't have any gay people. No one else has any gay people. Only, only the USA. Those are where all the, all the gays are. I think it's trying to be like aligned with the fact that queer people exist within the US military and like don't hide that. But still, um, gay people do exist everywhere and in all militaries, whether they're out or not is a different issue, but I don't particularly understand the problem here or why the pride flag automatically means American and why that's bad. Here we have two gay people saying, we just wanna be left alone. And then a family, like a mom, dad, and a child saying same um, and around them, is a Satanist. And then a man walking another man with a dog mask on, I believe is what's occurring there. Um, because they're at a pride parade. So my suggestion to you, if you wanna be left alone by the gays, don't go to pride. I know they're at a pride parade because there's a whole crowd of people behind them, including like the rainbow flag. So um, my suggestion here, if gay people bother you, why are you at pride? Why are you at Pride? Why are you taking your family to Pride if you don't want to see queer people being queer? Why are you there? Why did you go? Like this feels like a really simple solution. I am forced to be around straight Pride every day, everywhere we go. It's fucking straight Pride all the time. People are fucking making out on the street. People are doing whatever they want, whatever they want. I one time was just like at the beach and there are two people fucking having sex in the ocean right in front of me. They shouldn't be, regardless of whether you're straight or gay or whatever. Point being, gay people aren't the only ones who are forcing their sexuality on people. In fact, we do it a lot less. You just notice it more because it doesn't seem normal to you. But I promise, I promise, straight people are doing so much worse. They're doing it so much more, so much worse and a higher percentage as well. Um, but yeah, don't go to Pride if you don't want to see gay people. That feels like a pretty, <laughs> feels like pretty simple solution. Here's a trans person holding a rock on their back, like a relatively large stone saying, of course trans suicides are so high. Look how difficult society is on us. And underneath it is a big strong man holding up a massive boulder, which the trans person is standing on. Um, and it's transphobes. Society is so hard on transphobes. Trans people are here crying about how difficult life is for trans people, but the real victims, the real victims are the transphobes. They have the weight of the world on their shoulders. Society is beating them down. They have to uplift trans people and everyone else because society hates them. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm like actually quite taken aback by it, to be honest. It's pretty, it's pretty astounding actually. Believe it or not, transphobes are not oppressed and they, they don't, they, what? <laughs> transphobes are not oppressed at all. I need examples as to how life is hard for transphobes other than people telling them, hey, 
stop being a bigot. Like the only thing that is hard for transphobes is then seeing trans people exist. Like if seeing trans people exist and like get jobs, um, is that difficult for you? I, I need you to like, just take a break, touch some grass and realize that like, it's not your life. It doesn't matter. Trans people are people and they're valid and they have every right to live their life as you have every right to live yours. Other people succeeding and existing is not a burden to you. Like, I'm sorry people are mean to you, but they're mean to you because you're making fun of the fact trans people kill themselves at alarming rates. Like, bro. This one says, nobody is coming for your kids, conservatives. And then in the next square behind them is Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse with pride flags. And I just need these people to understand that having queer representation for children is not coming for your kids. That's not what, that's not what this is. It's just normalizing things because Believe it or not, gay people exist. And so showing them in kids media and celebrating them with children's things is is just telling them that that's normal. Because kids are gonna meet queer people. They're gonna have queer teachers, queer family members, like whether they be siblings or parents, aunties, uncles, cousins, like whomever, they are going to see queer people. And so, they're never going to be completely sheltered from it and they never should be. Putting it in media and just showing it, celebrating it, making it normal in the world that kids are in is just making queer kids feel more comfortable and also making non-queer kids understand that it is normal and not something to be ashamed of, not something to bully people for. Queer kids suffer a lot due to the nature in which being queer is talked about. If it is demonized and children view being queer as something that is different, queer people are going to get attacked. So if you are celebrating pride with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and in other areas, then kids are gonna see that as something to be celebrated and something that is okay. And it is going to stop bullying from happening, both from yourself, like internalized queer phobia, and also from your peers. That is why it's important. No one is coming for your kids. No one is trying to make your kids gay. They are just normalizing the fact that it is okay if you are and it is okay if your friends are. I hope that helps. So someone with a big cross yelling, the end is near. And this guy walking past like, yeah, right. And then coming across another person who says, climate crisis is near, but for real this time. And he's like, ooh. I mean, yeah. So one of them is based off of religion and a book that a lot of people don't really align with or believe in because there is no scientific backing for it. And one is based off of something that is very real, very near and like scientifically backed with a ton of evidence and like a lot of statistics and graphs and, you know, evidence to the fact that climate change is indeed real and it, it is it is a bit of a problem and we are seeing thousands of species die off and we are seeing like massive changes in our climate and in our weather patterns and in natural disasters like the evidence is all around i think we should be listening i think we should be paying attention and listening to that because you know it's kind of important it kind of affects everyone both alive now and especially in the future generations because like, you know, we want them to be able to be born into a world where you can still swim in the water <laughs> and drink water and breathe the air. You know, like, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to like be on a planet where animals exist and like the oxygen is breathable? That would be great, right? So I think we should we should be paying attention and listening to people talking about climate crisis. I think it's important. Here we have two Arab people and they get on a boat and they come to what I have to assume is the States because these are all based in the States and they see a white person and they say colonizer. And he's kind of looking at them like, what? And I think the purpose of this is trying to say that you can't go into someone else's country and call them a colonizer because that's what you are. And I, to that, want to be like, do you know what a colonizer is? A lot of the like Middle Eastern countries um, have indeed been 
colonized or at least have been very greatly negatively impacted by specifically Americans. Um, there's a lot of war that happens in these places and that was all really inflicted by Americans. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who do not really want to be living in those areas that are negatively impacted by such conflict that has been brought upon them by Americans. And so I will say that they do indeed have every right to go into your country and still be mad at you and call you a colonizer. And like you did indeed force them out of their own country. <laughs> They're not colonizing you. Being an immigrant is not being a colonizer. This is a communist saying, rich people should pay for poor people's healthcare. And then Mr. Beast saying, on this episode of Mr. Beast, we're help. And then the, the communist is mad. Like, not like that, not Mr. Beast though. And I find this, this whole conversation is a very interesting one. The Mr. Beast conversation and people's thoughts on Mr. Beast. I've never watched a Mr. Beast video, if I'm being completely honest with you, but I see him about and I see what he does and I see what he says. And like, listen, it's not really the same thing if you are only helping people specifically to get things in return. You know what I mean? And people will argue, right? They're like, well, he's helping people and putting it on YouTube and making money so that the money he earns he can use to help more people. Like, sure, but how much of that money is he keeping for himself? Because I know that he is a multi-millionaire. He is a very, very rich man. So I know that he is not spending all the money he is earning to help people. He is doing it for a profit and he knows that helping people is going to get him money. And it's also that thing of like, it's exploiting the people who he is helping because he is only helping people who are willing to be on camera. It's like, I'll help you, but you have to do this thing for me to get me more money and success and fame. And that's just like, kind of a bit fucked up as well, right? And then he has like a bunch of weird concepts. Like recently he tweeted about doing an experiment where he what, like locks two people in a room for 30 days and has like a hundred grand on the line. And if one of them leaves, neither of them get it. And they're just in a, like a room with nothing, but they're given like meals every day and that's it. And like, that's just psychological torture. <laughs> and, and the thing is as well, is that like, Shit like that is, it is just exploiting people who don't have money in order for him to get views and make more money. And it's this thing of like, I'm gonna take advantage of people with nothing so I can get something. You could just like help them, you know? And like, if he needs to do the helping to make money, then okay. But then with that extra money that he made, surely he can put that back into helping off camera, right? And it also doesn't really help as a whole. Like, yes, rich people should pay for poor people's healthcare and whatever, but like going and selecting like a hundred people to help is not the same as putting money into a healthcare system and helping everyone. We should be taxing rich people more and then putting that money into a healthcare system so everyone can get the help that they need, even if, even if I didn't have a problem with Mr. Beast, even if I didn't think what he did was like dodgy as fuck and like a tax write-off too, by the way, it would still not be enough. And I would still continue to say like, people need to do more. The government needs to do more. Rich people need to be paying more towards healthcare. Lower income should be taxed less, higher income should be taxed more. And I stand by that. Anyway, I think I'm gonna end this video here because I have talked myself in circles and I'm very tired. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all of that. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. I appreciate you greatly. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Raven, Elias, Chris, and Amelia. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to be on Patreon, you go to patreon.com slash SavvyCat or click the top link in the description for as little as one pound a month to get my videos a day early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, The Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, That Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes, you replace the dark